In this week's basics, we are going to work through various of the blocks or receiving movements where we are manipulating our opponent's body depending on what they are giving us. So we're going to work on blocks and we're going to take the blocks from our katas. So the very first one we're going to do is our face block and we're going to do the 90 degree turn as we do in Gekisara Echi and Gekisara Ni. So stand shoulder width stance for me, relax your arms. I want your right leg to step straight forward. Then from here, use your right arm, block in, left arm up, come back. Then your left leg, step straight forward. You're going to turn the leg that's now in front, that arm block in, other one goes up, and we go back again. So now this side, one, and other arm, two. And then we do the other leg, one, the leg and arm together, and other arm up. So let's try it a little bit more smoothly. If you get stuck, pause the video and practice first until you get the, the movements right. So let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, last one, eight. Make sure you understand this movement, then come back for the second block. Our second block we're going to work on is the Chudanuke, and we're going to use that with Sanshin stepping forward. So from here, one leg in front, other leg behind, toe in line with the heel, outside of your shoulders should be able to sit between your feet and the leg that's in front, that and Chudanuke. And we're going to step in and out, and our hand is going to follow our foot. So as the foot comes in, the hand comes in. As the foot goes out, the hand goes out. So we go forward. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So what I want you to do, repeat that a couple of times, go to the beach, go on your lawn, wherever, and work on stepping and blocking at the same time. Then come back for the next block. Our next block is going to be Hikiyuke, and we specifically are going to do backward stepping in Sanshin with Hikiyuke. Now, Hikiyuke itself you can use to step forward, but since it is a pulling movement, it really fits to moving backwards. So from an application point of view, I see this as a tracking movement, as a, as a pulling movement, where Chunanuke is to control my opponent. I want to move in and I want to control him. Now we want to pull him. So we're going to step backwards. Put your right leg in front, right in our hikiyuke, and we step back. So again, hand and foot together, then the leg that goes back, and the opposite hand together. So from here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight. Now there's something very important you must understand. When doing this slowly, you'll see the body is shifting. When you do it properly, you should find a center line and your movement should be the legs moving and not one shifting the body and two shifting the body. It is the legs that move and the hips go at a straight line backwards. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Spend a bit of time on that and then come back for the next block. Our next block, we're going to work on the Geronuke. And we are specifically going to look at it from a Shikudachi point of view. So we're not going to do it from Zenkutsu Dutch. 
in Get Your Side Edge, this movement here is not the same as the one where you cross your arms and you are manipulating an opponent's arms. Here you are pulling the person down, underhooking, dragging them down. It's a completely different movement and should not be confused with the actual cross arm block. So to do that block, we're going to move up and down in shikurach. So what I want you to do, again, find a straight line, go to one side of it, go in shikurach, have the hand out. So we're going to step, we're going to turn the foot on the line, we're going to step forward in shikurach, and we're going to block. We're going to turn the foot, we're going to step forward, we're going to block. And we're going to do it one more time. Turn the foot, step forward, and block. And we're going to do the same thing back. We're going to turn, step back, and block. We're going to turn, step back, and block. We're going to turn, step back, and block. Let's do a little bit more smoothly. One, two, three, backwards. One, two, three, forward. One, two, three, backwards. One, two, three. Okay. Do that a bit on your own and then come back to the next one. Our next block, we're going to look at Torochi. And we're going to do this block in uh, Neguashidachi, in cat stance. It really fits to the cat stance movement. So let's first look at the block itself. Standing shoulder width, this side's arm, so your left arm, my right arm, down. Opposite arm, up. First thing to notice, the bottom arm is pressing away from the body, one fist. Top arm, one fist. Your hands in the same vertical plane. From here, lift and cover. Hook. Same time with the little finger. Cut and turn the fingers up. Now, check the hands. Hand, uh, solar plexus and hand all in one line. It is not different heights. And press. Up and cover. Hook. Cut. Check your hands. Push. Up and cover. Hook and cut. Push. Up. Cover. Watch my fingers. They go up. When they reach the top of the other hand, they hook down. I'm not stretching my arm up. Keep the elbow in. Here you hook. And then cut. Push. Up and cover. Hook and cut. Push. Second thing to notice is when I'm doing the pressing movement, it is a spiral that goes out. So I'm pushing from the center out to the hip and shoulder. And then I cover. I hook and press. Controlling shoulder, controlling hip. Cover. Lock. Push. It's not always that it's a control. It can be gouging for the face and grabbing the groin. I mean, whatever. But from a controlling aspect, you want to control the shoulder. You want to control the hip. Um, if you look at grappling, there's, there's a lot of similarities in that. Always trying to control those limb areas. Okay, now let's add the cat stance to it. So, we're going to go into cat stance. Left hand down, right hand up. Left leg step back, and I pull my right leg into cat stance at the same time I cover. Make sure the leg that you're sitting on is the arm that covers. Hook and cut, push. Step, hook and cut, push. Now from here, what I want you to do is turn around, bend your bottom arm, touch your elbow, hook and cut, push. Step, pull, hook and cut, push. Step, pull, hook and cut, push. Turn, block, push. One, two, three, turn, block, push. One, two, Three, turn, block, push. Right, practice that a bit and then come back for the next one. All 
Our next block comes from Cypher. We're blocking up, we're blocking down. So again, let's look at it first in our um, high crotch. Forget the legs, just do the arms. The top arm, again, one fist away from the body. Bottom arm, one fist away from the body. I'm talking about the elbow. The top hand blocks down. The bottom hand lifts up. Block down, lift up. Block down, lift up. One, two, three, four. Okay, so when you see an upward movement like this, the odds are quite uh, good that the edge of the hand is striking on the side of your opponent's jaw. So it might be that I'm controlling, I'm in a, a, a clinched uh, situation, I'm pushing one arm down and away from me as I'm moving the opposite direction, which we'll see when we do the legs just now. And the other arm is covering and also striking. So odds are when you see this, there is a very good possibility that you're striking on the jaw and trying to push that back. Another reason is just to hook the arm temporarily in that place and continue with the knee kick. So, let's do the sideways stepping for this block. I want you to stand shoulder width stance. Let's first use a straight line here. Put the tips of the toes on that line. And then with your right leg, put the heel on the line and bend the knee and put the weight in that direction. Why? Because I'm putting resistance against my opponent's arm, against my opponent's shoulder. So the weight is on that leg. Other leg is light, because I'm controlling here, I'm pressing away from me, and it should be able to do a quick kick. Press the right arm up, push the left arm down. Bring the knee up, knee kick. Ignore the front kick, just put down and step side. Now again, heel in line with toe. So it's not a long step, just enough that your heel is in line with the toe, top hand block down, other hand lift up, knee kick, foot down, step side, block down up, knee kick, foot down, step side, block down up, knee kick, foot down, step side, block down up, and he's again. And do that a little bit more smoothly. So, right leg to the side, we block one, two, three, four, five. Okay, give that a go, practice. Don't think too much about the bunkai behind it, the self-defense aspect. For now, just try and get the movement right. And later on, we can look at the applications when we do cipher cutter. Let's look at the Haryuke movement from Saunshin Kata. And in my mind, this is a very clear placeholder for your Kataguruma movement. Okay? Uh, your, what's it, fireman's carry or something. So, what I want to do, first let's do the arms before we start with the legs. Right hand with the little finger edge of the hand pressing out. Left hand at your head. So from here, the left arm bend, right arm cross. Do a normal face block but open hand. And then this arm just press sideways as if you're trying to catch something and push it away from you. In, up, catch, down. In, up, push. In, up, push. One, two, three, four. Okay, so now... If you have the arm movements, let's add the legs to it. So from here again, we're going to work in Shikurach. So we go in Shiko. We have our left hand up, right hand up. We pull. Then the left foot goes back. 
right arm cover, left catch, right wall if this is, uh, if we're looking at the cutter or at the application, here is where we would be pulling the arm and trying to go between the legs. And step, block, and step, block. Now to reverse direction, all I want you to do, do the block again, and we move backwards. Step, block, step, block, step, block, block the other way. One. Two, three, four, block the other way, five, six, seven, and eight. Good. Now let's get to um, our up down block. Get the arms right. Um, this movement here is not the same as this nor this. It is two outward movements. It's much closer to this movement or this movement from respectively uh, Saifa Kata or Shisachin Kata than it is to uh, Chudaluke and Geranuke. Okay, so once you understand that, uh, facing the camera, mirror image, right arm up, left arm down. So from here, I want you to cover, and then you're going to do the block, but the block isn't a round movement, and a round movement, it is more of a strike. I'm pushing out, and I'm pushing out. I'm pressing out towards my opponent. Cover and press. Cover, press. Think of it more as strikes than um, manipulations. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so once you understand the arms, let's start looking at the legs. So, we take the center line here. I'm going to put my left foot's toes on the line, my right foot's heel on the line. Or if it's mirror image, obviously the other way around. I want to be facing towards that corner. So I'm going to step across, my knees are going to touch, my heel is on the line, and my front foot's toes are in line with the back foot's toes. So when I turn from here on the ball of the foot, I'm going to face a 45 degree angle that direction. Let's do that one more time. I'm in sunshine. The front leg steps across, the heel touches, uh, the uh, back of the knee touches the knee. My heel is on the line. I turn my toes that they're more or less facing the back foot's toes. And then I turn and I should be at a 45 degree angle that way. Now, if we add the arms to it, the leg that steps across is the hand that goes to the shoulder. So I'm going to step and I'm going to cover. So the leg that steps across, the hand goes to the shoulder. One. And then when I turn, I press out. I push towards that direction. And we do it again. Leg steps, cover, turn. Again. One. Again, two, again, three, last one, four. Now let's try the other side. So, put the opposite leg now, heel on the line, tips of the toes on the line. Let's first do the step. Step across, toes go in line with the back foot's toes, knees together. Heel to the line. We pivot on the ball of the foot. We end up 45 degrees. And we go back again. So we step across. And turn. Let's do that one more time. 
step across and turn. So now we're going to add the arms. Exactly the same as the other side. So from here, the leg that steps across, that hand goes to shoulder, other hand under the arm. Turn and press. We do it again slowly. Leg that steps, hand on the shoulder. Turn and press. So let's do four counts. One. Two, three, and four. Right. Practice that a bit, then come back for our final Shisochin block. Of the various blocks that we've been practicing, this is probably the one that is uh, most easily confused, uh, or most easily confuses people. Okay? I don't think the block itself is confused. So, let's look at the movement. We're going to be pressing out and covering. Now, this is at this point not doing anything. This position is to make it clear to you, get your arm out the way. You don't have a lot of space. Get it close to your body because from there, you're going to have to use this arm. And if it's already entangled, it's going to mess up your plan. So from this position here, let's just cover and out. Almost like we did Samushna, but, but very different in its application. So the hand is now close while the other one is one fist away. And two, make sure this hand is close to your body. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Now let's look at the 45 angle stepping for this. Let's take from a shoulder width stance a 45 degree long step to that corner leg. Place your left hand up. Or if you mirror image your right hand and your other hand, the one that's down, flat against your body, not in front. You don't want this arm entangled with your opponent at the moment. It's also not doing a strike at the groin. It is merely hiding. It's out of play at the moment to give it an opportunity later. So from this position, close to your body, catch. See, now it comes into play. From close to the body, it does a catch. It does not pull back. It does not pull to my opposite hip. So it does not go this way or that way. The hand stays. My body turns into the arm. And once I've turned, I'm using that hip to pull my body back. I don't want to use muscle to do this. I want to use as uh, efficient a movement as possible, which means I want to link my arm to my hip. So from this position, it comes out, it catches, I turn into that arm, and as I get here, my hip pulls the arm back, and the other one just wedges. It just comes up and it wedges. You, you basically, all you want here is this is a little protrusion outside your body here that's going to do the damage. I'm not elbowing, I'm not pressing, it's just there, and that's enough to cause damage. So now we're facing that direction. So now take that leg that's in front, and you're going to step to that corner. So what I want you to remember, the legs that step to the corners is that side's leg. So if I'm stepping to the right corner, it must be my right leg. If I'm stepping to the left corner, it must be my left leg. I'm not going to step to the left corner with the right leg, which would be the wrong leg. So from here, if I'm standing here, the right leg has to step to the right corner. So, I step. At the same time, I'm covering and out. So, the top hand over the knee, other one out of play, just hide it. Bring it into play, catch. Turn into the arm, use the hip to pull this arm back. Just bring the elbow out or the arm out, not the elbow, the arm out to make a little wedge here. The left leg has to step to the left corner. As I'm stepping, the leg that's in front and goes under. I do the movement. Remember, leg in front, hand is up in front. 
the back leg's arm is hidden, it is out of play until its opportunity comes up. Now I turn into it, I pull the hand back and I break. So last time, I step to the, with the correct leg to the corner, I cover, I press, keep the arm away from the action, catch. Once it's caught its target, use the body to turn, use the body to pull that arm back and wait for the other one. Right, I hope that makes it clear, um, practice a bit, go through all these blocks a couple of times this week, have fun.